Greetings, another story told to you by Miss Judith at the Baltimore Library. I do miss everybody so much, and I'm so glad that I can share one of my favorite stories with you. This is the Walt Disney Cinderella, retold by Cynthia Ryland, pictures by Mary Blair. This is a story about darkness and light, about sorrow and joy, about something lost and something found. This is a story about love. Cinderella was a young and lonely girl with no father to protect her, no mother to nurture her, and no dear sister with whom she could share secrets. She lived a dark life in a dark house with people who did not love her. Each morning when she rose up from bed, Cinderella felt this darkness all around her. Still, she always went to her window and made a wish for her life. Cinderella looked outward toward the world that stretched far away from her small dark room, and she wished for only one thing, love. Every day, Cinderella wished for love. Cinderella's house and Cinderella's life were ruled by a cold, hard woman with a face of stone and a heart sick with envy. This woman hated everything and anything beautiful. The small yellow birds in the trees, the soft rabbits in the garden, even the roses that bloomed in the summer fields. She hated Cinderella most of all. Many years before Cinderella's mother had died, Cinderella's father married again, not knowing his new wife's unkind heart would in time bleed the life from his own. He died, leaving Cinderella to survive alone, leaving her with nothing but her beauty and a wish for love. Cinderella's stepmother banished her from the warm parts of the house to the cold quarters of the scullery, where Cinderella cooked and cleaned and sometimes cried and sometimes dreamed. She did her duty. She kept her silence. But underneath it all, she was waiting. She had not given up love. She had, was waiting for it somehow, somewhere, to find her. Cinderella's two stepsisters also waited in the house, though they waited for something altogether different. They waited for riches. They wanted nothing else. Their hearts were as cold as their mother's, and only wealth had meaning for them. Love meant nothing, and if love ever did come to them, it is unlikely they would even have known what it was. Like the roses which did not bloom across their doorways, love itself did not even linger. One day into these lives came some unexpected, something momentous. It was news of which affected the destiny of each of them in ways none could imagine. The king who ruled their kingdom was growing old. His hair was white, his joints ached. It was time to let go of his throne. The king had a fine son, a son with integrity and courage and loyalty and honor. The young prince had every quality anyone could ask for of a man who would someday be king. The prince lacked only one essential thing. He lacked a wife. The prince had no wife because he had not yet fallen in love. Any young maiden in the kingdom could have been his, for he was brave and kind and destined to be king. But of all the girls he had ever known or seen, not one touched his heart. Not one moved him. The king, impatient with his romantic and lonely son, decreed that it was time, time for marriage. Love is an afterthought, an indulgence, said the king. Love is unnecessary. Find a bride, make her queen, that will do. Word spread across the land that into every home that sheltered a young maiden who dreamed of one day being a princess and the next a queen. The king had invited everyone in the kingdom to a grand ball. The palace so that from among them his son, the prince, might find a young maiden who would become his wife. Cinderella's stepmother and stepsisters received the news with black longing in their hearts. 
The stepmother was certain one of her two daughters would be chosen as the future queen. She had, in fact, always thought herself rather queenly. Surely her daughters had learned something from their mother. No one spoke to Cinderella, of course, about the ball. Servants do not dance at palaces, and they certainly do not become queens. No one bothered with Cinderella. Cinderella's stepmother was determined to make Cinderella's stepsisters attract great attention at the palace. She made them practice their curtsies, place their pleases, and their pardon knees, and she insisted they refine their music skills. The lessons were disastrous, but completed nevertheless. The night of the grand ball arrived and Cinderella's stepsisters, their greedy minds swirling with images of gold and silver, of diamonds and rubies, of all they imagined they might possess, departed with their mother for the king's palace. Cinderella knew when they left the house, why they left the house and what they were seeking. And she knew something more. She knew somehow that she was meant to go to the king's ball as well. Her heart told her, her heart said that love was waiting there. Cinderella stared at the sad, shabby, sooty girl in the mirror, and her heart broke for what she dreamed of but could not have. She could not bear the coldness of the dark house. She went outside and wept. Tears have a wondrous magic about them. They often change everything. And for Cinderella, on this night, tears created a miracle. A luminous creature appeared beside Cinderella, a heavenly creature, a fairy godmother. The king and kind and gentle fairy stroked Cinderella's long hair, and she said, I am here, my dear. Cinderella's tears then flowed like a fountain, now for joy, not sadness, and she was an orphan no more. Cinderella did not have to tell the fairy godmother what she longed for. She did not have to ask for anything at all. Those things which are meant for her found her. A pumpkin in the garden became a coach, four mice in the grasses became the horses, and a child of rags became a vision. Cinderella went to the ball with a promise to return home at midnight before all the magic went away. Who can say by what mystery two people fight each other in this great wide world? How does a young man find his maiden? His heart leads him. He finds her in a room. He asks her to dance. And when he touches her, he knows. Cinderella and the young prince danced into a private world all their own. They did not even speak. In silence, love found them. And when the hour of midnight rang through the palace and Cinderella remembered her promise, she took one last look at the prince's face and she ran. The magic would return a pumpkin to its garden and four mice to the grasses and a beautiful girl to the ashes. Cinderella ran. As she did, one of her slippers fell off and remained on the palace steps behind her. The prince, surprised and hurt, tried to stop her, but she ran so fast and people were standing in his way. The girl was gone. The only thing left of her was a smooth glass slipper. A young man knows what must be done when the girl he loves disappears. He must find her. Following day and days after that, a duke sent out the order from the palace, traveled the kingdom far and wide with a glass slipper in his hand. He went to every home in the land, searching for the foot meant for the shoe and the heart meant for the prince. Cinderella waited as she scrubbed the scullery floor. She waited to see if love would find her. 
Finally, the Duke arrived at the house of the cold woman, her two covetous daughters, and her sad and ragged stepdaughter, Cinderella. The Duke tried to slide the rough foot of each sister into the glass slip slipper. Neither fit. One foot was too wide, the other too long, and nothing short of a knife could make them any different. Are these the only maidens in this house? The Duke asked the bitter woman who would not, after all, be mother to a queen. There is only a dirty servant girl somewhere, answered the woman. You don't want her. Very well, said the Duke, and he turned to go. Just then, a shy maiden appeared at the top of the stairs. It was Cinderella. May I try on the slipper, she asked. The Duke, moved by the sincerity of her voice, stopped, and he looked at her. Come, my child, he said. Cinderella met him at the bottom of the stairs, and just as the Duke reached out for her hand, there came a sickening sound of shattering glass. The slipper had fallen to the floor. Oh, no, the Duke cried. The slipper! Cinderella looked into the Duke's anguished eyes. I have another, she said softly. Indeed, she did, and as the Duke held the second glass slipper in his hands, her lovely foot slid perfectly in. Cinderella returned to the palace, where love had always been waiting, and the prince took her in his arms. And they lived happily ever after. The End Well, there are many pieces to this craft, and I'm going to show you a picture of what it should look like. Um, we're going to start with the back and move forward. So that means you're going to take your three long pieces, and you're going to take the square, and you're going to line them up and place the glue on the strip. So that the centerpiece can go down. Now you can leave it this way without making the little notches in, or you can snip it and make the palisades. That's completely up to you. So with this, then you've got two skinny ones and one tall one. So you're going to take your golden spire and glue it in the center and your little blue ones on the side. So your back will look like this. Then we're going to take your centerpiece and I'm just going to pop these down a little bit more and paste your glue on there. your center. Actually, I glue this down too far. I need to go up a little bit. There we go. And then move this to here. So it looks like that. I need to Scoot that last piece up a little further. And then you're going to take this part and glue these. If you do the little tabs, you can do the little tabs. Otherwise, just make the blue part stick up just a tad above the top. And you want it to look like that. I'm going to glue this down. And then you're going to have your spires. So your center spire is going to have this for the back. You're going to have your clock your, and your two doors. So you want to take that out. Okay. 
And remember, this is your Cinderella castle. You don't have to do it exactly the way that I'm showing you. So here's your centerpiece. And you're gonna put this in the center of the, the castle here. And then you've got your spires. So you've got this part, and then this goes on here. That goes there. And then this will go up here. See, just like that. And then so you've got your other spire, and those go on the side. And you can put jewels and um, shiny pieces, anything that you have on there that you want to make this castle your own. I'm just showing you one way to do it. I am very big on making this castle all your own, exactly the way you envision Cinderella's castle to be in all of its beauty. And there's my castle. I hope you have a lovely summer and thank you for joining us for our summer reading program. Bye!